Hi, everyone, and welcome to Henrico Theater. I'm Amy Perdue, Theater Arts Specialist for Henrico Recreation and Parks. This is the 42nd season for Henrico Theater Company producing live theater for you, or it would be if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic. So we're thrilled to bring you our very first virtual one-act play. The play you're going to see today was written by a man named Ferenc Molnar, a Hungarian author. You've probably never heard of him, but in 1909, he wrote a play called Lilium, and Lilium was the basis for Rodgers and Hammerstein's production of Carousel. I'm delighted to present to you today two of Henrico Theater Company's most favorite performers. So without further ado, here are Jenny Fralin and Kyle Billiter in A Matter of Husbands by Ferenc Molnar. Enjoy. You wish to see me? Yes. What can I do for you? Give me back my husband. Give you back your husband? Yes. Husband. Yes. You are wondering which one he is. He is a blonde man, not very tall, wears spectacles. He is a lawyer, your manager's lawyer. Alfred is his first name. Oh, yes. I have met him. I know you have. I implore you, give him back to me. You mustn't mistake my silence for embarrassment. I'm at a loss because, well, I don't quite understand how I can give you back your husband when I haven't got him to give. You just admitted that you knew him. That scarcely implies that I have taken him from you. Of course I know him. He drew up my last contract. And it seems I may have seen him once or twice since then, backstage. A rather nice-spoken, fair-haired man. Did you say he wore spectacles? Yes. I don't remember him with spectacles. He probably took them off around you. He wanted to look his best for you. He is in love with you. He never takes them off when I'm around. He doesn't care how he looks when I'm around. He doesn't love me. I implore you. Give him back to me. You weren't such a very foolish young woman. I should be very angry with you. Wherever did you get the idea that I have taken your husband from you? He sends you flowers all the time. Well, that's not true. It is. It isn't. He never sent me a flower a day in his life. Did he tell you he did? No. I found out at the florists. Flowers are delivered to your dressing room twice a week and charged to him. That's a lie. Do you mean to say that I am lying? I mean to say that someone is lying to you. What about this letter? Letter? Yes, he wrote it and he said... He wrote a letter to me? Let me see. No. I'll read it to you. My darling, shan't be able to call for you at the theater tonight. A thousand apologies. Ten thousand kisses. Alfred? Oh. <laughs> I found it on his desk this morning. He must have forgotten it. He must have intended to send it to the theater by messenger. And I opened it. <laughs> you mustn't cry. Why mustn't I? You steal my husband, and I mustn't cry. Oh, I know how little it must mean to you, how easy it must be for you. One night you dress like a royal princess, and the next night you undress like a Greek goddess. You blacken your eyebrows, and you redden your lips, and you, you wax your eyelashes, and you paint your face, and bright lights to make you seem beautiful, and author's lines to make you seem witty and wise. What chance have I against you? What, what chance have, does a simple, poor-minded lawyer have against you? No wonder he fell in love with you. What chance have I against you and my cheap little frock, my own lashes and brows, my own unstudied ways. I don't know how to, to pose and to strut and to lure a man. I don't have Mr. Shakespeare to write beautiful speeches for me. In reality, you may be more stupid than I am, but I admit that when it comes to luring a man, I am no match for you. <laughs> this is a very interesting case. What is? Yours. What do you mean? 
I mean that I have never received a flower or a letter or anything else from your husband. Tell me, haven't you and your uh, husband been getting on rather badly of late? Yes, of course. You used to be very affectionate to each other? Yes. And of late, you've been quite cold? Yes. Of course. A typical case. My dear, if you knew how often we actresses meet these sort of things, uh, it is quite clear that your husband is playing a comedy uh, to make you jealous, to revive your interest in him. Do you really think that? Do you mean to say that such a thing has happened to you before? Endless times. Well, it happens to every actress who's moderately pretty and successful. It's one of the oldest expedients in the world, and we actresses are such conspicuous targets for it. Why, there's scarcely a man connected to the theater who hasn't used us in this way at one time or another. Authors, composers, scenic designers, lawyers, orchestra leaders, well, even the managers themselves. To regain a wife or a sweetheart's affections, all they need to do is invent a love affair with one of us. The wife is always so ready to believe it. Usually, we don't know a thing about it. But if it is brought to our notice, we don't mind so much. At least we have the consolation of knowing that we are the means of making many a marriage happy that might otherwise have ended in divorce court. But how, how could I know? Oh, oh, dear, you mustn't apologize. You couldn't know, of course. It seems so plausible. You fancy your husband in an atmosphere of perpetual temptation in a backstage world full of beautiful sirens without scruples or morals. One actress, you suppose, is more dangerous than a hundred ordinary women. You hate us and fear us. No one understands that better than your husband, who is evidently a very cunning lawyer. And so he plays on your fear and jealousy to regain the love that you deny him. He writes a letter and leaves it behind on his desk. Trust a lawyer never to do that unintentionally. Uh, he orders flowers for me by telephone in the morning and probably cancels the order as soon as he reaches his office. By the way... Hasn't he a lock of my hair? Yes, in his desk drawer. I brought it with me. <laughs> yes, they bribe my hairdressers to steal from me. It is a wonder I have any hair left at all. Is that how he got it? Well, I can't imagine how else. Tell me, hasn't he left any of my love letters lying around? No. Oh, don't be alarmed. I haven't written any. Then why would you say Oh, that? well, I might have if he had come to me frankly and said... I say, Sarah, will you do something for me? My wife and I aren't getting along well. Would you write me a passionate love letter that I could leave lying around at home where she might find it? Oh, I certainly should have done it for him. I'd have written a letter that would have made you weep into your pillow for a fortnight. I wrote ten like that for a very eminent playwright once, oh, but he had no luck with them. His wife was such a proper person, she returned all of them to him unread. How clever you are. How good. <laughs> Neither better nor worse than any other girl in the theater, even though you do consider us such monsters. I have been a perfect fool. Well, you do look a little silly, sitting there with tears in your eyes, <sighs> your face flushed with happiness, because you have discovered that a small, blonde man with spectacles loves you after all. My dear, no man deserves to be adored as much as that. But then, that's your own affair, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yet, I want to give you a parting bit of advice. Don't let him fool you again. He won't, never fear. No matter what you may find in his pockets, letters, handkerchiefs, my photograph, no matter what flowers he sends or letters he writes or appointments he may make, don't let him take you in a second time. You may be sure of it. And you won't tell him about my coming here, will you? Not a word. Oh, I'm angry with him for not having come to me frankly for permission to use my name the way he did. You are a dear. I don't know how to thank you. Uh, now, you mustn't begin crying all over again. <laughs> You've made me so happy.
All right, Alfred, you can come out now. She's gone.